And we're back with the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Tunde Kolawole is on standby this morning. He joins us uh, via phone. Tunde, it's good to have you join us. Good morning and compliments. Good morning, season. my sister. Yes, please. How, how are you? was your Christmas? Well, we are at work and you know how it goes. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were going to send me an elephant that's my Christmas gift. Oh, it's not over yet. It would definitely get to you gradually, steady right. and slowly. Thank okay. You for working. Then. Uh, let's quickly turn our attention to the Punch newspaper this morning and see uh, what the Punch got to say. There are several big stories across different parts of this papers or across the parts of the papers. The PDP crisis is what made it to the front page and it's boldly written on the Punch this morning. Agreed governors may endorse or passengers candidate January the 5th. Governors at London meeting vowed to back Southern presidency. We're talking about the G5. And the question of whether these governors, I mean, we know these governors belong to a political party upon which they were elected and they, become, they became governors. Now, whether or not their party might be living up to the expectation, should they be acting contrary? Should they not be uh, in support of the presidential candidates of their various party? Name your preferred presidential candidate, PDP, there's angry governors. Okay. Good luck to Atiku if he thinks he can win without us. Bode George is quoted to say. Economic crunch, Senate proposes 376 new agencies. Wow. Uh, at the time where we're still grappling with revenue. Narrow redesign. Flooding affected agri sector. Narrow redesign and flooding affected the agri sector. That's what the governors are quoted to say. Uh, that's uh, on the punch this morning. And just before we move away, or your Niger crashes killed 27 die in Calabar Carnival. There are several reporters to, you know the exact number of persons who have died. And that's not good, you know, for the media. Ekiti Tribunal delivers judgment today. Lagos 6 recovery of three drowned beach goers. Mm. Presidential panel reviewing workers' salary in Gige is saying, <laughs> it feels like we have, you know, forgotten about the issue of uh, the... Uh, Asu, the lecturers, and then, of course, the strike. We probably might have a comeback in January when the festivity is over. I'm just thinking. Uh, on the leadership newspaper this morning, 2023 elections. It says, Atiku Obi Kwankwa so optimistic of victory on first ballot. Our candidate enjoys solidarity, support of majority of Nigeria. That's what the PDP is saying. Labour Party insists projection show is leading. I take that again. Labour Party insists projection shows it's leading. Nigeria see Kwankoso as only alternative. NMPP were making inroads, SDP is saying. I mean, that's what it should be. But at the end of the day, you talk about uh, casting of votes. There are a lot of persons who have not gotten their PVC yet. That some persons who might just be uh, unpatriotic when it comes to that day and not be able to go out and cast their votes. So there's a lot that needs to be done. Inflation, federal government will increase workers' salaries. That's what uh, Ngige is saying. I am not fretting over Gumbe governorship race. You know who I was saying all of that. And uh, Carnival Calabar, many fear dead as car crushes into crowd. Narrow redesign, ATM still dispensing all notes 13 days after rollout. And that's the truth. Like I said, I'm yet to see uh, the narrow note. 16 abducted in fresh Kaduna attack. These are some of the, uh, the headlines you find this morning on the leadership newspaper. Uh, we turn our attention to the nation, and that's because it's made available by a paper vendor. Government raises hope on salary increase for workers in 2023. Move to cushion rising inflation effects, says Ngige. So this is also to cushion, I mean, the plan is to cushion the effect of 
uh, inflation. Presidential Committee on Salaries is already reviewing the salary structure and is expected to come up with salary adjustment in the new year. And some people will argue differently that rather than talk about increase of salary, which is also very important, but it's possible, it's important that you fix, you know, other economic issues and concern, which would allow for, because it's okay for you to have an increment, but when you know, the prices of goods and services, basic commodities on the high. How far can the salary go? Ex-governor Namani predicts Tunubu's victory. Slay law or slain lawyer was pregnant with twins. Buhari killing is heinous. And uh, motorists kill seven at Calabar Carnival Parade. Ipman insists on improved supply to end petrol crisis. These are the headlines you find this morning on The Nation. And then we have the Sun newspaper. Buhari furors over killing of Lagos lawyer by policeman. Oh, <laughs> it goes beyond being furious. We're talking about police brutality here. What uh, is the president furious about police brutality? And then if he is, uh, we should swing into action. Directs police authority to take strongest possible action against culprit. Song Wo Lu promises justice, sends delegation to family. How two hospitals rejected my wife before death. Oh, that's so unfortunate. The widow escorted to say that's the husband of uh, Bolan Le. Federal government to make pronouncement on salary increase soon in Gige. Describes 2022 as a year of industrial dispute. Atiku Tunibu's camp boasts a victory at first ballot, dismisses survey. Ten die, six injured in Lagos Ibadan Express accident. We have no hand in attacks on INEC facilities. Other crimes, that's what IPOP is saying, and Calabar Carnival turns bloody as 15 feared dead and scores injured. Ayade expresses sadness and cancel, uh, you know, the fiesta. Oh, really? Mm, that's that's very unfortunate. Islamic cleric tax Tunubu on government of national unity. Imo indigents in diaspora use Lord Uzodima over security infrastructure. These are some of the headlines uh, we have this morning on the Daily Sun. But it's time for us to you know have uh, our guest this morning, Tunde Kolawale, sharing his thoughts. Tunde, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thank you for having me, my sister. Well, Tunde, I'd like to share your thoughts on this. Uh, the economic crunch, the fact that the Senate is proposing 376 new agencies, uh, shunning a report that has been made. Uh, what are your thoughts? Senator speaking, I want to say that is the wrong way to go. <clears throat> when you check uh, what government is doing all over the world today, they are done fighting and effecting more money and resources on technology, bringing cutting technology into governance so as to reduce the size of government. So what, 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 what one would have thought is for the Nigerian Senate and the Nigerian government to emulate what is happening in the other parts of the world. Because when governance is bloated, you tend to consume more resources that certainly really should go into development, into infrastructure, into hospitals into having excellent schools all over the place. Why these people are going in this direction baffles me. Most times these things are born out of selfish uh, intentions. They are thinking about how their wards and children and all that are going to be employed in some of these NGOs and what I mean. They are also thinking about what is done. At the end of the day, those uh, NGOs might be turning in when they come to seek budgetary approval in the National Assembly. And you ask yourself, where is the money to start um, um, running, managing, and investing in three hundred uh, uh, agencies and MBAs uh, all over the country? It is a problem. It means that uh, these people are really not following the current trends that um, uh, you could see in the other parts of the world. Well, it, it, it's it's very saddening that uh, those who should be calling the shots and those who should be, 
you know, making laws and ensuring that uh, everything goes smoothly seem to have a disconnect with our current reality. What's the rationale behind exactly. having, uh, you know, 365 exactly. or 75? I'll give you an example, and with due respect, you will remember that uh, on three occasions now, the law has been taken to the Senate and the National Assembly, the Nigerian Peace Corps, uh, which uh, the, the, the Senate and City on establishing the Nigerian uh, Peace Corps and War Army. And you ask yourself, with all the armed of security agencies that we have all over the country and all that, what differences have all those things been made to us? And if people want to establish a non governmental agency and all that, it doesn't require the, uh, any law by the National Assembly. All the first persons want to do, I mean, ought to do, is to register with the, the Corporate Affairs Commission and establish this. Because I have studied the proposed activities that the, 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 the Nigerian Peace Corps wants to do. It is not different from what the Boy Scouts, what the Boy uh, all over the world uh, does. Why do you now want to create that agency and then impose its responsibility and the humanity of that organization on the federal government of the institution? The only answer I have, the only possible answer I have, is that at the end of the day, this is just another company which some people in the National Assembly are floating. Such that when they are out of the National Assembly, out of governance, they will still have some organization that will be making bountiful returns to them on the yearly or annual basis. Let's move away from that and talk about, you know, politics, the PDP crisis. Some people would say it's not a crisis. Uh, but there are several reports saying that there's a lot of division, several factions, especially in different states across the Federation of the PDP. And that's not really good uh, for us when you say, you know, your intention is to uh, win an election and be in charge of power. Uh, on the Punch newspaper, it says a group governors may endorse uh, the former president's candidate as Olusegun Obasanjo's candidate on January the 5th. Tunde, what, uh, uh, Tunde, Tunde, what do you make of the actions of this aggrieved governor? Don't you think that this is contrary or this is an anti-party kind of behavior that this governor is putting? Is it not expected that they should endorse or support, you know, a presidential candidate of their parties? Exactly, exactly. Let me say this, and very emphatically too, that what is happening in the PDP portends a lot of danger for the Nigerian nation. If the PDP doesn't come very strong into the 2016 election, and the APC happens to win the presidency and some of the governor and senate, or they are dominant for the win the 2016 election, chances are that the Nigerian will revert to a one-party state. And when Nigeria reverts to a one-party state, that means democracy will never try to live part of the world again. When you take the antecedents of the APC all over the country, into cognizance and other. Especially with respect to the local government elections and what are you? These people are not disposed to a free and fair uh, election. And when you have a government that is not disposed to a free and fair election, at the center, with the other parties, they're very weak and unable to compete effectively with the APC, then, the, then Nigeria can as well say goodbye uh, to democracy and the free and fair election come 2023. More importantly, look at the governor. They say they are G7 governors and all that. This time they want to hold a meeting and all that. They fly outside the country to hold that meeting. When we do have a lot of uh, beautiful places, where such meetings can be held in this country, you and I know of Oputuraj, you and I know some of those resources in Lekki and Naja, you and I know some of the whispered town in Pataki and Warato. But rather than invest in their own people and in their own uh, environment and all that, they go abroad to put food on the tables of uh, people who will have nothing or who is not going to in any way add value to us as our people. This is a very, very unpatriotic behavior that shouldn't be coming from these different uh, governments or whatever they call themselves. Furthermore, you and I will know there was a convention of the PDP. We are not the Atiku emerged as the presidential flag bearer of the PDP. If the G7 governors were there and all the other governors were there and nobody held their hand. They participated in that convention. And I like the people who emerged by whatever means, whether he bought the vote or uh, people voted for him or not. It is immaterial. Immediately he has emerged as a part of the party. Whoever has given them, no matter how great, great the people might be, they are supposed to line up behind the people because the convention of the party and the Congress is the highest 
decision making body of that party. And once they that party, and once they convince all the Congress and uh, said, look, this is a flag bearer that they might and all that. They will not like on all the other parties in that party to kill out to kill behind the party. I mean the flag bearer. And if you are not going to kill behind the flag bearer and all that, what you expect to do is to leave the party and go to some other party to think we best represent your interest or whose candidates you think you might want to vote for, and not to stay within the party and start to join it from the for 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 for, for Musa. When you do that, in my humble opinion, it is an anti-party activity. And I would have expected by now that the party congress and the party leadership and all that should have come out openly and will the big stick against these so-called five uh, uh, G5 uh, governors that we have in some of these places. And let me also say this. It is possible for Elijah Siku to win the election without uh, during this G5 uh, governor. Because can you say the, the issue is this. Majority of the people in the party will not contend or might not agree with what the governors are saying. Because immediately the PDP loses the next election and all that, it will be like suicide for them. For them to get back their rhythm and certain and then uh, become a party that can contest and contend for war power will take another maybe 10 years for them to reorganize. So I am not too sure that the rank and file of the people who want to work with the G5 uh, uh, governor so that they will lose the, 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 the presidency. Come 2023, because like I said, if by chance they happen to do that, then that will be suicide for the party. And that suicide might not be good for the rank and file of, 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 the, of, the, of the party. And for the Nigerian people as well, because one party democracy is too dense for any African nation to embark upon. It leads to abuse of power, it leads to the trampling of fundamental human it also leads to a kind of a abrogation of, of, of the rule of, um, of the law. Uh, Kola Wale, I, I, I'd like us yeah, to move yeah. away from that subject because all right, all right. I, I think that yeah. this might continue up until the election. But it's really unfortunate right. uh, uh, incident for our democracy because political parties at the end of the arguments have been that uh, this lack of internal democracy and th this is actually playing out, you know, very well. But on the leadership yeah. newspaper, there are concerns about the non-circulation or the lack of disp dispensing of the new note from ATMs, especially in Lagos, uh, Lagos right here. And just 13 days after it was released, uh, the, the, the ATMs are still dispensing the old note. And we have 34 days before, uh, you know, it becomes, the old note be stops becoming a legal tender and then the new one yeah, becomes exactly. very uh, prominent then. So, uh, what, what do you make of this now? What's, what do you think of the situation and uh, what's the economic implication for all of this? Well, uh, what we have seen with the new Nara design is a tragedy can be foretold. I mean, that has been foretold. You and I will know that the time span that they do have and the secrecy that surrounded the design of the Naira and Nara will almost tell you that it is difficult for the government to really be able to meet the expectation or to really be able to put enough money in circulation and also I mean, the new money in circulation and withdraw the old notes from the circulation. If you also add to that, the trauma or the allegations or what the CBN governor is also, who is supposed to be coordinating all this activity, is going through today, you and I will know that we are not in good state to be able to handle that um, uh, new Naira design and then withdraw the old Naira uh, from circulation. This happened before when General Muhammad Buhari was a military head of state, in which he suddenly woke up and then decided to change the Naira note. So as to render useless whatever money any of the politicians may have been hiding in the septic tank in their farms and uh, in the sofa of their of their city room. It didn't work at that period in time making it five or it four or the other. It didn't work. It was a colossal failure. Because when people steal money in this part of the world, but when people embezzle public funds, the first thing they do is that they go to the uh, to the foreign exchange market and send those money into nine, into dollars, into pound sterling, and what have you, which value is almost a, a constant. And then the one that they don't change to dollars and naira and dollar, they go and invest in, in, in shares and stocks. And the one they don't invest in stocks and dollars, they use to buy property. So at the end of the day, it's not any people that usually will suffer the petty trader. In the village, the uh, woman who holds a uh, pancake in uh, Lagos, who doesn't even have uh, 
a bank account. And you go for all the other ordinary people on the street and all that. You ask yourself, what is the objective? For which this Naira is designed, is designed to achieve or is meant to achieve, I can point to any good objective that it is likely to achieve within those, this short span of uh, uh, time that they are given to themselves. I see it as a kind of uh, another procedure project. Um, and one of the that President Mohamed I mean, Kola Wale. Uh, Kola Wale, I'd like us to talk yes, about yes. what becomes of the economy, uh, that's of our country, on the 31st, I mean, shortly after the 31st of January, especially when we don't have uh, this note in circulation, the new note. Uh, what becomes of, you know, our country? What, what, what would happen? What are we looking at? Do you think there's going to be an extension or uh, that law would become... Uh, would take effects automatically that um, the old notes will no longer become a legal tender? I predict that there's likely going to be an extension. And immediately there's an extension. Whatever intention that those who came up with this program had would have been uh, nullified, it would have been uh, uh, negated. Furthermore, the implication of the economy is very, very great and what have it. Those who have honestly and genuinely made their money and I need to do such money, the court, the money, the old Naira knows that they do have in their hands and all that. There won't be enough time and space for them to be able to exchange it to the new Naira knows and what have it. Furthermore, I see a situation in which uh, a lot of uh, small, small businesses uh, and uh, uh, companies are likely to collapse because of this um, uh, uh, Naira redesign. Because as it happened between 1984 and 1983, it's likely to happen again uh, this time around. Because when people have honestly made their money and they kept it somewhere and then they cannot put it back in circulation and all that, that money is lost uh, forever. And the sweat of their brow is not compensated for, uh, by the people. Um, furthermore, uh, the politicians, uh, like I said, will be the ones to benefit from it. They already have large volumes of cash in dollars and pound sterling and uh, euro in their hands and all that. They, again, they will be the ones smiling to the bank at the end of the day, when um, this whole policy has been wrapped up. Furthermore, there could be consequences on the next election, the 2015 election. We put it too many um, uh, things on fire uh, before the, the next election. And that is why some people are beginning to think that there might be a, an agenda to really truncate the 2015 election. Because if you want the 2015 election to run smoothly and all that, then you wouldn't be coming up with this kind of policies and programs that are neither here nor there. Well, there's also a plan by the federal government to increase salaries, and this is just to, you know, cushion the effect of inflation. Do you think that this is actually a very rational economic decision? Well, my own elementary, my own elementary, elementary understanding of economics is that uh, in period of inflation, you, are, you should withdraw more money from circulation so that inflation can come down. If in the period of inflation, the federal government is not thinking about putting more money in circulation and all that, the chances are the consequences that there will be fueling fueling that inflation and all that. We saw that uh, during the Ujoji or during uh, the, the, the military era of General Yakubu Kowal, in which the country was said to have more money in its treasury than it could uh, uh, do it. And then they started giving increasing salaries and they provide, I mean, buying cars, houses, and all that, for all manner of civil servants and all that. At the end of the day, money that should have gone into critical investment infrastructure was lost to consumption. We didn't really yield any dividend or any positive uh, result to the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian uh, people. So, with these policies too, I foresee that uh, it will not aggravate the inflation that we have in society. When there is inflation, there are more subtle ways by which you can really cushion the adversity of those inflation than increasing salary. I'll give you one example. But the market sector of the Nigerian economy is comatose. And until we look at those areas, eh, the economy is not likely to improve. Nigeria is the only country in which when you want to buy a car, you want to build a house, you want to buy a residential, a gift, or what have you. You have to steal money if you're a civil servant uh, from the system. And if you're not a civil servant, if you're in the organized private sector, you also have to steal money rather than 
go to your bank, tell them go to the mortgage institution and borrow money, and then you will pay back in the future. And that is the reason why you find out corruption has become an endemic thing in Nigeria. I would rather want to say, if the government really desire to cushion the adversity of the inflation that they have in that, they should be looking at the area of mortgage sector, in the area of uh, food security, bringing down uh, the cost of uh, uh, food by putting more money in the hands of farmers to really uh, plant uh, more uh, things that people could eat. And also investing in the security people in such a way that they'll be able to secure the land. And then the farmers will be able to go back to the farm to till the land and produce their food for the people. Also look at what is happening. But, but Tunde Kola Wale, um, we can yes, also yes. take out the fact that, you know, Inflation has a direct impact on salaries. Exactly, exactly. So, um, if, if you if you are saying that, I mean, uh, it's not a good thing to do. There will be enough. I mean, so much money in circulation. That what what then should be done because uh, people are spending more and the salaries is not even meeting up to, you know, the daily needs of the people with the cost of you know goods and services. I agree with you, my sister. But let's take this hypothetical example. People are now buying petroleum products. A diesel, for example, goes for about 1,000 naira now. And then the other petroleum products like a petrol and what have you goes for about 300 naira per, 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 per unit in the, in, the, in the stations and what have you. If government will make the fuel more available, and then you crash the prices of those petroleum products, and people can buy it cheaply and not the cost of transportation will come down. The cost of transporting food from the rural area to the urban sector will also come down and what have you. And then the maintenance of vehicles will also be reduced and all that. Some of these things have a direct or coronary effect on the well-being of the average Nigerian worker. In fact, it's likely to bring down inflation if we go in that direction. But we're not looking in that direction. And that is the direction in which I think we should be going. Rather than putting more money in the hands of uh, the people's servants. Because when you look at it, how many people are directly involved? How many people are working for the federal government? How many people are working for the state government? They are less than 10 or 30 percent of the population. They think we say what happens to them. Are you, how are you going to really elevate their own um, problem in terms of inflation around the country? The federal trader. Uh, Kola Wale, I'm not sure that the Nigerian, the an average Nigerian worker, will be very, will be excited with your thoughts this morning as, as regards, uh, you know, Where increasing. The increasing. truth is always bitter, but uh, we must not shy away from saying part of the reasons we are in this quagmire in this country is that uh, we play the ostrich, we bury our heads in the sand, they're pretending there are no problems. The truth of the matter, we have real problems, and inflation has never been cured by putting more money in public anywhere in the world. I challenge you to that econometrics. All right. Uh, as we close this down, it would just be the last for me here. The president has reacted, and that's on the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. Uh, according to the headline, it says, Buhari furious over the killing of the Lagos lawyer by policeman. Uh, how do you react to this, especially when there's been, uh, you remember the hashtag answers protests? That was a yeah, nationwide yeah, yeah. yeah. movement, and uh, it hasn't stopped because the people have continued, you know, to uh, speak up. However, w Let what do you make of this? You. When what do you make of the president's Let reaction and response? You. you know, juxtaposing that with uh, the demands of the people. Let me say this: in the last few months or there about, more than three lawyers have been killed all over the country. I'm also aware that some lawyers have been tried in some courts on trump up charges that were cooked up by the Nigerian police and the state security party. The lawyers that were killed outside Lagos uh, were assassinated by certain persons or the other. Where are these other ladies that uh, were said to have been killed uh, by the Nigerian police? And you also know, if you have been following that story, that um, before now, we said, they said about three months ago or four months ago, why not that person was also killed at about that place where this lawyer was killed, and that um, a male uh, Nigerian uh, uh, citizen, and that the policeman who killed the man also came from that particular police station, where this other person who killed the lawyer also came from, and uh, what have you. see, the truth of the matter is that uh, not too long ago, you and I, like, uh, you are you referring us back 
we had the end of end stars um, uh, project. And after the end process, a lot of panel was set up all over the country with serious recommendations as regards how we can really cause police brutality and the inefficiency all over the place. And while you is now planning at the killing of the lawyer, I think I have a call to implement those uh, recommendations and and and, and uh, things that uh, those panels have recommended. Because I'm aware that those panels even recommended that certain police officers should be seen and then that should be taken to the court of competent jurisdiction and try for the infraction that they have committed. But the president and then the attorney general of the federation have refused to do the needful with regard to that. Furthermore, if you are compassant with the idea of criminal justice law in Nigeria, which um, has a whole gamut uh, of recommendations as we gather we can call police brutality, in what way as the presidency and then the Nigerian government, including at the state level, at the local government level, and the federal, level, federal government level, bother to implement the law that are contained in the administration of criminal justice system and all that. They've never been able to do it. All that they are concerned with is how the security agencies, the police, the PSS, the army, and all that, who protect them in power and protect their personal, personal interests. And now those security agencies can be deployed against innocent citizens for, 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 for particular purposes and what happens. So when I heard the president saying that uh, uh, the law should take its course and all that, I tend to take it with a pinch of salt. I would rather want to see the president uh, begin to implement the law that contains the Assembly of Criminal Justice uh, Law 2015. And then the, the federal government and the state government will begin to uh, implement the recommendations of uh, the panel that starts after the entrance uh, panel. And also have the courage to bring to justice policemen who engage in this kind of very, very innocent activity? No, but um, 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 uh, Kola Wale, I, I think that we have. Just a minute, just a minute. My sister, just a minute, just a minute. This is very, very important. Look at those who kill those lawyers. Two of the policemen who participated in the killing, they formed a common intention. They went to that particular place and they were there when that lawyer was killed. And if they are so killed, if they are not being killed, they go back to their station. Whatever money they were able to extort from people, they will share it together. But two of those policemen, who we can describe as a particular criminal, or they have, I mean, the, 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 the accessory after the fact of the killing of, those, of that uh, uh, lawyer. And they're criminally culpable. Those policemen, two other policemen should not have been released, but the Nigerian policemen have let them go, leaving only the man who pulled the trigger to face the, 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 the consequence of that. Whereas you and I do know all these accomplices, all these uh, accessory after the fact of the killing of the lawyer, but the police authority has practically. Let two of those policemen go. We are at the city of the should face the justice system with regard to the innocent killing of that lawyer. Well, uh, you also would agree with me that uh, we're costing it down now. I mean, but you agree with me that the, the laws are very explicit about the issue of murder. And so I really don't know if the president has to be, does the president need to arrest these persons? Because uh, if you commit murder, whether whoever it is that you are, I'm not sure that there's a clause or a phrase in the law that says, oh, if you're the president or the governor, police officer, if you commit murder, then you're exempted. The law is there. Who should implement all of this? We're talking about the arrest. Is the police themselves. And so why are they not doing that? Does the police itself not have a system to purge itself? Does the police commission? Why do we still Don't have... Forget. No, Don't so, forget so, so, that so, the I mean, president is the chairman of the police uh, affairs commission. Also, don't forget the attorney general of the federation and the president, the chief law officer of the country. In the past, we have seen president saying that uh, certain parts in certain parts of the country should be brutally dealt with. Kola Wale, my, my point is the police. The president, yes, of course, we know that the, uh, you know, the issue of the police is within the exclusive uh, list. And of course, we know that the president, uh, it's a central issue, right? And, but you, you can't say that the president himself should be the police officer across the different parts of the country. The police no, is no the police. No, that, the so, so if we have right? the laws, why is it that the, these laws are not respected? They should implement the laws. And if someone is not implementing the law, the system itself, you know, should, should uh, purge the system, should purge itself of all of this rot. Let me tell you, let me tell you why the laws are not being implemented. We, the lawyers, the Nigerian lawyers have been uh, saying four times, times without number now, that the president to, should be to the, the of appointing the attorney general of the federation. We have to... And that they are... 
that the office of the administrator of the federation should be separated from the chief prosecutor for the federation at the state level and the federal level. Because the office of the administrator of the federation is political. The office of the administrator of the state level is also political. The governors are appointed there. This is what the head of the or the president or the governor wants them to do. Most times are they do. But if they have the separation of power, in which the chief prosecutor for the state and the chief prosecutor for the federation, it's not a political appointee of Mr. Pete and all that. We will be having a better implementation of the law all over the country. But they will not allow that to happen. Thank you. We have to let it go at that point. Uh, Thanks for having me. Thank you so much to Nicola Wale and have yeah. yourself uh, a Merry Christmas and a prosperous 2023. Thank you. Thank you. All right, then. It's really unfortunate that uh, there's been really different reaction as regards, you know, the issue of police brutality. And following the recent killing of uh, Bola Rah Raham, Bola Le Raham, I beg your pardon, uh, who was shot by a police officer. And some people are saying, oh, it's not important that we talk about it because it didn't happen in our state or in our climb. I mean, it's, it's not what's happening here. So let's talk about what's happening. But we, we seem to forget that we're humans before we're you know, f uh, from any ethnic religion, before you begin to put tags on yourself, you're a human being. And that's w what's very important. She's a human being. Whether or not she's a lawyer, that's not the point. She's a human being and who has a right to life and that life was caught short. We're saying that this is going on. A lot of people are losing their lives on a daily basis. Those who should protect us are taking the lives of those that should protect. And the fact that these persons are paid with taxpayers' money, that's really unfortunate. We can't continue like this and expect a different result. With the president frowning and getting angry and being shocked and, you know, different statements and condolences, does not change the issue. There was a protest, you know, two years ago. There's been a remembrance in 2022. I'm also sure that there might also be a remembrance in 2023. But has it changed anything? Let's think about that. That's much we can take this morning at this point. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be delving into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.